Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. Uh, for those interested in requesting any type of videos, PayPal is usually the best bet. Or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Wherever that is on YouTube now. Over there, over there. Um, it could be a... Also, people have asked me about Cash App. That's why I've been mentioning a couple times in videos. I do have that as well. If you want, feel free to ask. I could send it. The, the link, uh, the, the tag for it. But anyway, the... Top... Uh, the... The thing at hand, this is a weird movie from Mr. Anonymous. He didn't want his name said, which is perfectly fine. Just let me know. But, you know, he's like, ah, just don't say my name. And actually, he said, pick out a movie that you've never seen before, but you've been wanting to see. Don't have it be a re-review, but a movie you haven't seen, but you've been curious about. So that was very kind of him. That was really generous. He didn't have to do that, but that was really cool. And I'm like... What is a film Big Tears about? And then I'm like, you know what? This film I've seen the cover for a lot. I like the cover. I actually like the name. I know a lot of people don't like the name Nightmare Beach, but I actually think it's a cool name for a horror film. And I know the guys at Dead Pit, uh, my buddies over there, they reviewed this film. They said how weird and fun it was. And I want to give this a watch. It came out in 1989. And this was fun. I mean, it's not a good movie, but it's if you like 80s, it kind of symbolizes the 80s in a nutshell. The rock music and the score throughout the entire film. It's a sex comedy, as in there's a lot of titties, a wet t-shirt contest. It takes place in Miami. There's a killer that's on a motorcycle that will fry people with this bike because his bike is an electric chair which is pretty unique i've never seen that used as a weapon before each death scene yeah the effects are not tom zavini but they're still practical and they're still pretty gory again the effects aren't grade a but they're fun to watch and that's the appeal of uh, practical effects that even if they're not photorealistic they still be very entertaining to watch and like almost each death gets their moment to shine. Oh, yeah, about almost each death. And that was pretty entertaining to see. The lead characters, eh, there's not much to say about them. But you have some supporting cast members like John Saxon from Nightmare on Elm Street. You have Michael Parks from Dust Till Dawn. He was in Death Wish 5. He's been a lot of stuff. Lance LeGault, who I remember as Decker from the A-Team TV show, more so the first season. And the story of the film, apparently it's two directors, Umberto Lindsay, I guess he started making the film, and then something happened, and then he left, and Harry Kirkpatrick took over. But I guess he wanted Umberto to stay to, hey, you know, help with some of the technical stuff. He's like, okay, that's fine, but it's more now Harry Kirkpatrick's movie. Either way, a leader of this biker gang gets electrocuted. He says he didn't do the crime he was accused of. He said he was framed, but he gets electrocuted. Some time goes by, and it's spring, spring break in Miami, or some would say Miami, Miami. Well, as Michael Parts say, the annual the annual migration of the idiots. So you have your two lead guys. One is a guy, our lead, who he was in like the Orange Bowl. He was a quarterback, and he threw a lot of interceptions, and he lost the game. So he's a bit down on his luck. His buddy brings him there to spice up his life, his sex life, to get him out there and have fun. And like I said, it's not that the actors are great, but they're in that vibe where they work for what's needed for this weird, quirky film. They work for what its purpose is. And what I mean by that is, like, when they get in the motel room, his buddy dumps, like, 30, 40 condoms and goes, Use all these. Or when we go back to school, I'm telling them, You're a bender. <laughs> or, like, Listen, the Beaver Scouting Patrol is leaving. Come on. 
that's what I mean, like, the dialogue with this type of stuff, and you have those two, you have your lead guy meeting this lady bartender, and they start liking each other, and then you have this biker gang who's pissed that the leader died, and they're a little bit pissy at everybody, they get pissy at the two lead characters at one point, uh, John Saxon, who's this corrupt cop, will mess with the biker gang. The leader of the bike, the the new leader of the biker gang, he's not that driven actor. He makes these awkward pauses, like I'm telling you, you need to stay out of my way. I'm like, are you like the Latino William Shatner? Like, what are you doing? But Hispanic, I, I don't know what it was, but. And then you have a killer, which I like the costume of the motorcycle get up and the helmet. And each kill involves either fire or electrocution, which, so it's, not a, it's a slasher film with not a lot of slashing. There's really no slashing, but you do get some inventive kills. I mean, spoiler, again, the spoilers. And that's the thing, you, know, like you have some blood, you have some gore, in terms of, you know, I'll get to, you have some titties, you have, again, that 80s aesthetic up, down, and center, and, like, it was paced fast enough that I was never bored, I'm like, oh, there's Michael Parsons, there's John Saxon, what's going on here, wait, what, okay, that's a cool kill, <laughs> that's how it kept going for the film, and it was paced well enough that I, I was along for the ride. Spoilers, like, the kills... Like, the killer pits up this hitchhiker lady, and she's like, let me get off the bike. He presses, like, these big red buttons on this bike, and she's being electrocuted. And, uh, how do I put it? Uh, like, her, her face fires up. Like, her face gets burnt up. You see shots of like the the head and there's fire around it and part of it's melting. There's a bit later on where he takes another lady and puts her in front of a furnace and she's lit on fire, screaming. And when it cuts to like it's just like a bloody skull, bloody dripping skull. Um, there's another bit where someone gets a has headphones and they get fried and then like part of their eyeball is showing where. This part is gone. It's like a bloody eyeball bit. I wouldn't say it's a huge body count. But when it's there, it's definitely effective. I mean, granted, he doesn't really kill... There's maybe one guy he kills. It's like a pervert who's going through a peephole, and he's found later with his... kind of like strangled, so he has a special effect here, like the the dare or whatever went into his skin. So it's not a lot of, again, big body count, but again, when it's there, it's definitely not boring. And throughout the film, I'm just like, okay, this really does remind you of those films back in the day, you know, in a good way, where you have the guy who's always playing dad, so it's like, oh, he pretends to be a shark, or he pretends to be dead one or two or three times, so you know eventually there's going to be the time where, okay, buddy, stop faking again, then he really is dead. So I guess that's the second guy. Yeah, the guys are killed off screen, That's now that I think about it, that's weird. The girls are killed on screen, but the guys are killed off screen. I mean, I wonder if that was done on purpose. Because I, I find that fascinating now. Because most of, yeah, even like the guy who gets electrocuted at the beginning, it cuts to the people watching. I said this is spoilers, so beware. This is spoilers for now. Spoilers, heavy. Uh, Michael Parts plays his doctor, and he feels guilty. And he's talking to John Saxon, who's the corrupt cop, and this mayor. He's like, I can't do this anymore. Do you hear this? Shoots himself, but you it cuts away. You hear the gunshot. So yeah, each guy death is off screen. But the girl, again, 
I don't know if I'm looking a bit too much into that, but I just something I realized is a bit interesting. But yeah, there's 80s tunage all over on the soundtrack. Like I said, there's a couple scenes with your know, wet t-shirts, nudity, with people on the beach. Um, like I said, the 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 lead. Oh, I I lied. What am I talking about? I went all that for nothing. How to forget? I just because I'm, I'm spoiling it, but I didn't want to spoil it, but I will spoil it. Uh, the buddy, the the guy's buddy. That's the one death scene you see. So yeah, there are multiple guys. What am I talking about? God, my my brain got fried. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe the killer fried me, but I survived. So I'm here to tell the tale. Yeah, his buddy died as well. The just the lead guy. I know I'm going over the place. Fuck it. Well, this movie's all over the place, so it fits the review. So fuck it. <laughs> The two leads, they're out partying, they're having fun. The lead guy, he wants to just kind of play it safe and calm. The other guy wants to party and... You want to touch bushes? You know, this weird, crazy dialogue he's saying. He gets in a fight with the bikers, they beat him up. The, the buddy's left in a pulp. The killer comes by, the buddy thinks it's one of those bikers, and he gets fried. So yeah, he does get fried. We do see that kill. So then the chunk of the film is the lead guy trying to find out where his buddy is. The lady bartender helps out and the two of them try to figure out what happened to his buddy. Meanwhile, John Sachs and Michael Parks and the mayor, they're doing this cover up because well, we can't tell people that there's kill, there's murders till they'll ruin the spring break holiday of all the money that would bring in. And I'm sitting there going... Like, okay, he's trying to do, like, Jaws. We can't close the beaches. But at the same time, but I guess that's the, the point they want to make. These are corrupt figures that they're going to take the bodies and bury them at times in a damn... What kind of field was it? It was a phosphate field? Phosphate mine. I'm like... Is that really the best place to put it? Is the damn phosphate mine? Like, can you just... You just bring... Like, you could just not tell people what happened. You have that right. Take it to the morgue. Put it on ice. Like, you don't need to bury it in a phosphate mine to, to do that, right? You just say it was an accident. As this happened all the time. Oh, someone got electrocuted by having a damn wet t-shirt contest and they dropped their damn radio in. Like, there's all sorts of stuff they could say. They're already lying now. And I just felt like they went to a lot more effort than they needed to be corrupt. But, I mean, that that's just me, though. But yeah, the, like I said, the, his buddy's face was lit up, fried up by the killer. Eventually, the, the lead guy does find out what happened. But it seems almost random. Because this is when the pervert gets killed. And then the lady, she got killed in an elevator where she got zapped in the mouth. And this, like, animation of sparks happens. Which I did laugh at. That's not what it's supposed to do. But I did... Hey, that's the result. I, I laughed at it. So the lead guy kind of just pops in that building. I don't know if maybe his motel room was in the same place. Perhaps. I'm guessing that's what it is. But it's just very convenient that he just happened to be there. And then somehow put two and two together and go, Michael Parts must be hiding some shit. So he hid in Michael Parts' car and then threatened him. What's going on? Go, I don't know, but go. To, uh, your buddy is dead and buried him at the phosphate, phosphate mines. And he goes there. And then John Satson goes and says, You get the hell out of Dodge or I'm going to frame your ass. <laughs> like I said, the, I mean, the, the cover up seemed like uh, in a weird way of doing it, but that kept me intrigued as to what the hell's going to happen next. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to explain it. 
Also, some of the edits in this film is really weird. I mentioned the boiler scene, the furnace, where a lady just burned, and she's charged to, like, bloody bones. Like, you see her. It next cuts to... Oiled up guys showing their ass cracks. <laughs> I just, hey, earlier we had the women show their titties, then we got the guys showing their muscles and showing their ass cracks and getting oiled up. Now, granted, the songs that were playing, it's probably no songs I would ever hear again. It's no, uh, My Trust in You from Hell High or any, you know, A Fall Break, like the Mutilator. Like, so it's maybe not catchy songs like that, but the amount of these 80s tunes around was still nice to, to hear. But again, that was just a weird cut from Charred Bloody Remains to. Oiled up ads and ass cracks. Abs and ass cracks, you know. Abs and ass. Abs and ass. <laughs> and again, like these weird random stuff that goes nowhere. Like, the two lead characters, they go to find John Saxon to try to get some info. I guess maybe to... We don't know who the killer is, so... Oh my god. He has BTSM sex toys. Maybe he's the killer because he's such a pervert. He's such a sicko. <laughs> Don't touch John Saxon's shit. Um, and again, there's some decent bits of direction. Like when the, the one girl I said, she, what, there's a girl with a headphone, she gets electrocuted. You'll see it in the visor of the motorcycle helmet. Like that's a cool looking shot. Like the idea to have that shot of, let's reflect it on the motorcycle helmet. That was neat to, to see. That was a nice idea. I said this heavy spoilers by the end of it. Uh, John Saxon has a gun on the lead guy, but the biker team comes by because they're tired of John Saxon screwing things up. They uh, maybe they think John Saxon is the killer as well because one of their own, the girl with the headphones, they've been killed. So they dr they shoot him, wound him, and they drag his ass, like tie him up and drag him behind a motorcycle. So the lead guy thinks it's over. The girl, the bartender lady, is somewhere else. And there's the killer who chases after her. They get in a fight. And you find out it is Lance Legault. Now, yes, it's going to be obvious that you don't know who, he, who the killer is because there's only a certain amount of suspects. He's this reverend guy who pops up everywhere. And you're wondering why he's here, why he's there. He's always going about his daughter and her wicked ways, and you're wondering where that's all leading up to. Now, when Lance Legault is being psycho, I actually think he's good. I think he has the right voice. You know, he's that religious nut job to kill the sinners that are spoiling their the wicked ways around here. But he plays that very well. I will say, he has the right voice, the right demeanor for it. So, to play the Psycho Reverend. So, I actually think that was a good casting choice. Just the reveal, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's who I thought it was. And also, the, the it's not really a battle, it's just a bit of a chase. The lead dot gets with the girl, they're chased by the killer on the bike. They just move out of the way, and the killer f slips, flips on a tire. This is like a junkyard. And then he flies, and he jams onto some electrical lines and fries. And I just thought, number one, that should have been a very bloody death, because you saw how bloody the deaths he did onto people. His death should be bloodier or the bloodiest. I think that should be fitting, satisfying, exhilaration for the audience so the fact he's just kind of shaking and he's dead I thought that was really lame and the fact that it was just done by accident they had this whole idea that the lead guy is a football player so why don't you do this they get to a spot they're trapped they don't know what to do and the guy sees something and like a football he makes the the most important pass in his life the, or should, the most important throw he throws it, you do like slow motion, throw it, 
hits the guy on the head, he wobbles, and then goes to some power lines. And then when he fries, he could be like burning up. And I don't know, maybe he blows up. I know it doesn't make sense, but a lot of this doesn't make sense. So if, really, if he, if he shook and then he blew up, I think people would be fine with it. They would go, it doesn't make sense, but again, none of the other movie, he, he has an electric chair motorcycle. Just go along with it. Just have him blow up. There's so much charge. He's like, Pfft. like the uh, Halloween Six. That ass hat, that asshole stepfather. Where Mike, Michael Myers is like one of the few good things in that movie. He blows up in bloody chunks. Have it be that way. I think they should have done that with the ending. So I was a bit disappointed. Granted, I appreciate no downbeat and no sequel bait ending. By which that ending was a bit more like the other kills and. And again, you bring up the idea he's a football player, use it. Have him throw stuff and hit the guy in the head. Touchdown, asshole! <laughs> there you go. I mean, Ken Wall did that later in the Take Your Beverly Hills. But that was 92, 91. I think 91. This is 89. If you, you know, steal that ahead of time. Get ahead of the game. Touchdown, asshole! <laughs> You finally got his touchdown. And it was the, the, right, the best one he could get. It saved his life, saved the league. So, yeah, at the ending I thought was a bit weak. Then the lead two t actors characters, eh, they're, they're not great. They're serviceable at best. Uh, but, it's just how weird and offbeat the film is. How it encapsulates like, the Miami Beach flavor. The, the 80s encapsulates the, the music, the way people are dressed, the nudity, the creative kills, uh, pretty quick pacing, some recognizable, recognizable faces supporting cast. Uh, it's still a fun film for what it is. I still enjoyed it. Uh, it is on Blu-ray. Uh, was it who released it? Let me double check real quick. I forgot who released it. Uh, one second. So yeah, overall I liked it for what it was. Uh, learn how to spell. Uh, I've learned, I hate typing on a damn phone because I type something but it's so damn... It's not what I wanted. No, is that what I wanted? Make these buttons f bigger. See, 80 films did a Blu-ray, but also... Uh, who did? Tino Lorber. Oh, okay, Tino Lorber did the Blu-ray. And what is on this for features? 4K Master... Audio counter by a film historian. Interview with the composer. So, not much. But, there you go. Raw, yeah, score by Doblin's Claudio Simonetta, which is a pretty decent score. Speed of Witch is interesting that the Biker Gang, their logo, they're called the Demons, and they stole the Demons logo, like the, the font. The demon's font is on the back of their jackets. Like, so they, they literally stole, hey, demons, and the way that towel was, was steal it and put it on the back of their jackets. So I thought that was kind of funny. But overall, I liked it for what it was. I mean, like I said, it's not my favorite slasher film, but if you like slasher films, you've never seen it. It's definitely worth a watch. It's weird, it's offbeat, and it's it's entertaining. So we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.